What's up guys, Jay here at Micro Center in Tustin, and it's actually time for me to do kind of a panel upgrade. I have been running the same panel at home now for quite a while, it's an LG Ultra Wide, uh, but with OLED technology really coming down in price and becoming more mature when it comes to small format, I mean OLED's been around for over 10 years when it comes to TVs and stuff, um, I'm gonna kind of do a quick walkthrough and talk to you guys about some of the different OLED technologies and give you guys some insight on whether or not maybe it's time to upgrade your panel to an OLED because you can build the most amazing gaming system in the world, but if your panel kind of looks like desaturated mush, then that's like the last bottleneck of your gaming experience. So let's go learn something today. So Jay likes boats, USS Fletcher, torpedoes, and agility. No, 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 no. He really likes boats. I'm the Bismarck, I shoot big guns. Oh no! He really, really, really likes boats. The IGN Yamato, the true fear in the Pacific. And when he's not playing with his boats, he is building his boats. <sighs> Done. And when he's not building those boats, he's playing with those boats. Online. In World of Warships. The holiday season is officially live in World of Warships, and this December is packed with festive rewards. Just by logging in, you can grab a free Tier 9 ship, plus two permanent camouflages and two Santa gift containers. Jump into the cozy Nordless Han port, decorate the Christmas tree just by playing, and open the advent calendar each day for a holiday story and a daily reward. Fan favorites are back too, like asymmetric battles, snowflakes, new commanders, and even the event pass. And new this year is Santa's Ultra Gift Containers, a collector's dream with better chances at rare ships, doubloons, coal, elite commander XP, and bonuses. So whether you're new or returning, Turning, use my link below to register, grab invite rewards, and celebrate the holidays in World of Warships. So yeah, he really likes boats. Yeah. So obviously there's a lot to choose from when it comes to panels. And the cool thing about Micro Center is they have pretty much all of them on the market. Now, we're not gonna really talk about LCD today because LCD has been around for decades and the LCD tech has gotten a lot better. Um, but today we're gonna talk specifically about OLEDs. In fact, I recently got an email from someone asking me, Jay, is it, is it safe to buy an OLED? Because in the early days was very prone to something called burn-in. And that is when you have the same image displayed on the screen and then the image sort of gets retained or burned in to the actual display itself say for instance if you're always watching the same tv network and there's a network logo in the corner of that tv now when it comes to tvs they had that figured out through things called pixel shift or pixel sweep so for instance pixel shift means and it happens very quickly you don't really notice it but after a certain amount of duration the pixels just sort of jump they kind of move over left right up down whatever they're constantly moving around and it might only be one pixel that it's moving but that's enough to actually stop uh, burn in from happening. Now another thing that happens here is called pixel sweep uh, and that is a process where the panel internally can kind of do a reset on the the pixel itself and then usually how that happens is uh, you'll, you'll see like a flashing image on a screen. It might just look like RGB happening very quickly um, but it's actually refreshing through red, green, and blue um, when it comes to the to the OLED color that's being displayed. Now OLEDs are fascinating because they provide the best contrast ratio. Effectively being infinite and the reason why it's effectively infinite is because it can display a perfect white and a perfect black so when you talk about contrast on things like lcd panels it's impossible to ever have it go truly black because it is a backlight lighting through a, a, a liquid crystal display which means that backlighting is always on. Now they've tried to combat that with LCD panels in the past with things called local dimming, which means instead of having light around the edge of a panel and then having the pixel gate open and close based on letting light through in certain areas, they started doing what's called local dimming where they have an actual LED array behind the LCD panel directly shining through it. And then by adding more local dimming zones, which means groups of LEDs can start to dim or turn off. The problem is you still have bleed when that happens from the neighboring LEDs bleeding into that area. A perfect example here, as you can see on screen, if you make the screen black on an LCD, but you have your white cursor and you move it around, you see a glowing or a halo effect around that cursor. OLEDs on the other hand, don't do that because each OLED actually emits its own light. Now there's different types of OLED technology now as we've moved forward. The earliest OLEDs were known as WOLED or white OLED or white organic LED. So when we talk about uh, WOLED or white OLED, we're talking about the actual arrangement of the way that the light and the color is making its way out of the panel. You essentially have a white LED that's always on emitting light when that pixel is activated. But the thing is to create color, 
it has to actually have a filter in front of that white LED. You have a red filter, a blue filter, and a green filter now that will filter the light coming through to get you the right color when it comes to producing, whether it's this yellow or orange or blue or red or whatever it may be. Now the downside about having those filters in front of the white LED is the fact that you're now affecting the overall brightness of that panel. And so once you put filters in front of it, imagine putting on those old school red and blue 3D glasses you're not really doing anything but applying a color filter to your eyeball, but you'll notice it still darkens out. So it costs a lot more power to drive higher brightness on WOLED panels. But the fourth white LED that is not filtered is just there to help pump brightness out of the panel. So you can imagine that makes it a bit more inefficient when it comes to power draw and heat. If you've ever walked past an older OLED panel for like TVs, it reminds me of the old plasma days where you're like, man, it's hot in front of this. You can feel the heat coming off of it. But now we have something called QD OLED or quantum dot OLED. And that's a, that's a technology that Samsung came up with, which basic, basically is a completely different uh, way of generating the color and the light coming out of the panel. So the, each pixel is still its own pixel, which is emitting its own light, but instead of a white LED, it's a blue LED. And so on top of that blue LED is a quantum dot arrangement, rebroadcasting that light. So instead of having a white LED go through a red filter to create red, it's a blue LED that has a quantum dot on top of it that's reacting to the blue LED to transmit or change that color into the desired color and then it's emitting at full brightness. So it's a much more efficient way of actually generating the brightness and that color. So QD OLED is like the next generation of what we're seeing now with OLEDs. It debuted in 2022. Um, so when it comes to its overall safety in terms of things like burn-in and whatnot, it's one of those where it's like, not too early to tell because all the same safeguards are there, like pixel, pixel sweep, pixel shift, um, all, the, all the stuff that you would expect to protect your uh, OLED panel, because let's face it, they're not cheap. They are definitely an investment, but they are the best technology when it comes to trying to get you the most vibrant colors and the most detail in both highlights and low lights. Because the great part about all OLED panels, whether, whether it's a W OLED or a QD OLED, is they're all HDR. Now, some of the early challenges when it comes to OLED was the fact that you only had TVs uh, as your option. And we all know trying to game on a TV outside of on a console, especially when it comes to PC, is you have things like uh, low refresh rate, so 60 hertz. The o first OLEDs were only 60 hertz. Um, that's the bare minimum for most PC gamers these days, right? The form factor of it was huge. I mean, the smallest ones you could find at the time were like 48 inch. Most of them were in the 50s and 60 inch range. Um, and then obviously input latency because TVs have so much post-processing that happened to make the image look great. You were watching the movie at the rate and the timing of which is being presented to you. You weren't making inputs to the TV. So taking an OLED TV and trying to use it as a gaming panel was very painful. It was actually very slow and it was not a good experience. So the other challenge was scaling it down. So it's one of those things where unlike a CPU trying to scale that wafer to larger and the yields get thinner as it gets bigger, on something like an OLED, it got it was the inverse where making it smaller was the challenge. You can now get OLED panels well over 240 hertz in gaming. And without all the post-processing crap that you find on them to make the image look better for you know, media consumption, the response time or the time it takes for the pixel to turn off or go from off to gray and off again, there's gray to gray and then there's a full on off measurement. You talk about one millisecond response time on a, a LCD panel, panel being great where five millisecond was like the bare minimum, but one millisecond was like, yeah, that's good. Try 0.03 millisecond response time on average. Coupled with 240 or greater uh, refresh rate, now we're talking the ultimate gaming panel. So the panel I've been using at home is a 38 inch LG ultra wide 3840 by 1600. That's how you get the ultra wide. Otherwise it's basically 4K wide, but only 1600 P tall. So it's not 2160, it's 1600. And it's been great, but I'm just kind of over LCD. I'm ready, I, all my TVs at home when it comes to media consumption are all OLED and I'm completely spoiled by it. And as great as that panel is, it is years old at this point. And I'm comfortable now with all of the safeguards of OLED to know that I'm gonna be able to be running it at home without any issues. Because for the last year, I've actually been running the Alienware ultra wide OLED panel. I haven't had any sort of burn in. There's been plenty of times I've just gone home from work over the weekend and it's just sitting there on the desktop because I don't let my systems turn off the monitors and go to sleep. Coming in and going, oh crap. And I always check 
I turn it off, no burn in whatsoever. But that's because the safeguards are built in. But anyway, let's go ahead and show you what I'm gonna go with today. For the first time in about 10 years, I'm not gonna be running an ultra wide at home. LG actually has a 45 inch, well 44.5 inch diagonal uh, ultra wide, 51, is 5K wide by 20 or 2K vertical. But it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's a 21 by nine, but it's 45 inches wide. It's a W OLED. And I had full intention of buying that LG panel when I got here today. But then I saw this. This is the MSI MPG 321 URX 32 inch 4K UHD 3840 by 2160 240 hertz QD OLED panel. Not sponsored. I've been doing a lot more gaming and to be honest, ultra wide, especially if it comes to shooters are kind of a disservice. There's too much distraction in your peripheral. It's just, I saw this and I'm like, okay, 32 inch and 4K is what I'm used to looking at at the office. That's what we have in our elite panels, but those are LCD. Having two of those on my desk would be perfect. So I'm really excited to give this a shot. But most importantly, the 240 hertz because the LG panel I was looking at was a 165 hertz. So that's gonna be nice. And the QD OLED means we're gonna get even better um, color rendering, if you will, because we're not dealing with uh, the dimming of that color through the filters, like we already explained. But it also gives me a chance to see how this one's comparing to a W OLED when it comes to things like burn in and whatnot. So I'll have the W OLED at work and then I'll have the QD OLED at home. The third part that made it very difficult was price. So the earliest OLEDs that we saw on PC were well north of $1,000, well north of $1,500, and we're talking like 24 or 27 inch panels. This looks very expensive, 800 bucks, and it is. I'm not, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. $800 for a panel is a lot, but the prices are starting to trend downward. And the thing is I can get both of these for only $100 more than what that single LG panel was gonna be. So. That's where we're gonna give this a shot right here. I don't know who's ODM panel for MSI. Actually, yes, I do. You know how I know who's the ODM panel for this? It's because it's QD OLED and it's only made by Samsung right now. Well, Samsung and Sony, but Sony's not really making gaming panels. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is a Samsung panel. Uh, if it's not, put it in the comments. You guys love to prove me wrong when I'm wrong and I'll, and I'll eat that crow when I have to. So I'm gonna grab two of these today, and I ask that you guys uh, give this video a follow if you've never come across our channel before, or if you know anyone that's interested in shopping for OLEDs and they're still kind of on the fence and whether or not now is the time. Uh, the technology's here. It's safe in the sense that burn-in is not really a problem anymore these days, and the price is trending down. So I would expect this over time to only get less expensive, but don't feel like you have to get QD OLED to get an amazing panel. Any OLED is gonna look infinitely better than any LED LCD panel that exists today. So I think the time is now where it's, it's safe if you have the budget for it. There's no sugarcoating it. They're not a cheap buy-in, but they have now crossed into LED LCD territory in terms of like the boutique brand pricing. So you can find them cheaper too. This is, this is expensive because of its size. So if you're shopping like 27 inch or even 24 inch, they're down in like the $400 range, which again, you could pay so much more than that for an LED panel in, this, in the same uh, you know, kind of elite gaming category, if you will. Not for everyone, it's expensive, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have my own OLEDs at home now. Oh, one of the major drawbacks, which we didn't really talk about, almost every OLED has a glossy or semi-glossy screen, so if you have a bright room behind you or a window behind you, that might be part of a problem, but I'm used to that because like I said, all my TVs at home are OLEDs, so I think, my eyes tend to adjust pretty quickly and I always make sure my lights are off when I'm gaming at home anyway. So there you go. If you guys wanna see a dedicated video on this, as always guys, thanks for watching. Give this video a like and a follow. If you're new around here, hit the bell. Uh, that way you're notified when new videos go live. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.